Now, I know what you're thinking. Yami, yeah, you might as well be the very last person to tell me what habits I should develop as a writer, but hear me out. I can almost promise you that you will find so many nuggets of wisdom in here that it will make your head spin. Yami yeah, might be a two-time Daytona slaying, Porsche flying, and all-around strange bald man, but I promise you these habits will help you turn into a better motorcyclist over time. Hello everyone, as previously mentioned, I am your host, the immortal, quarrelsome, and handsome Gummy Q, back to give you the injection of motorcycle content you've come to crave. And if you like the video, be sure to smash that like button and if you want your opinion to be heard well then by god place your comment in the description below and let the world know that's the only way to do it you couldn't possibly make a response video to this one otherwise i'd have to destroy you don't even attempt to make motorcycle content as good as i do today's video is powered by manscaped if you guys saw my previous spot for them you're gonna love my nuts later when i tell you about it. without further ado let's jump into those sweet habits you should develop as a motorcyclist our first habit that's sure to cause some consternation among certain riders habit number one not sitting in the middle of intersections in many states cars are allowed to pull out into the middle of an intersection when attempting to make a left-hand turn. This is to allow for the flow of traffic, ease of crossing for the car, and etc. But I have seen way too many Russian dash cam videos where people just blast through a red light, pummeling the car in the middle. And to be honest, I don't even sit in the middle of an intersection in my car, but on a bike, you wouldn't catch me dead doing that. Riding motorcycles on the street is all about mitigating risk and sitting out in the middle of an intersection like a sitting duck is not my idea of a fun time. It's much safer to either wait for your green arrow or to just hang back at the line of the turning lane and then yield into the lane. If you can't see the opposing lane when you have your yield, then don't risk it. Too many times I see people sitting in the middle of an intersection, creeping up onto oncoming traffic, just trying to find a little spot to dart between the cars. Why? Just wait. Is your life really worth only an extra minute or two? So make sure to develop the habit of riding defensively and don't put yourself in situations where it's more than likely you're going to get hurt. That brings us to our next habit you should be practicing. Habit number two, riding as if invisible. Now this is common practice for motorcyclists. Ryan over at F9 made an awesome video about invisibility training for motorcyclists that covers this one more in depth. Definitely go watch it if you haven't seen it yet. Seriously, they make way better videos than us over at Yammy Dip. Just go check them out. But the premise here is basically to ride as if no one can see you. You should always assume that you are not able to be seen by people when you're riding. That's gonna make you ride much more defensively. If you're coming from a car driving background, this might be a little hard for you to grasp. How can somebody not see me? Shouldn't we be using their eyes when they're driving? Well, the thing is with texting and driving getting more and more prevalent and people relying more and more on these autopilot-esque features for cars, us motorcyclists need to be more vigilant than ever to make sure that people don't ram into us while drifting from their lane while trying to cop a high score on Candy Crush. The long and short of it is, motorcycles are much more rare than cars in most American cities, and car drivers are frankly just not prepared to keep their eyes peeled for one. A white, plump crossover with all the latest gadgets and features? Well, that's easy to see. A small Ducati with some guy eating biscottis on it? Unlikely. As you rack up miles in the saddle, you'll start to notice that you'll develop a sixth sense for when people are not paying attention. Since motorcycles have the uncanny ability to demand every single ounce of your attention, since all four of your limbs are working when you ride and your head is up and looking where you want to go, but don't get cocky and rely on that sixth sense. Don't get complacent and always ride as if others literally cannot see you. It just might save your life. Our next habit's an easy one, you'll be thankful for it the next time you need to make a tight maneuver out of a parking lot. Habit number three, dragging your rear brake in slow, tight turns. If you're a newer rider, you might have noticed that your motorcycle can tend to feel heavy and unwieldy at low speeds. You can try to correct with this with input from the bars since you're not moving fast enough to counter steal and well, it still feels a little awkward, like it wants to tip over at any moment. Well, what gives? Since motorcycles are fixed on two wheels, they're inherently unstable at low speeds, so what can we do to mitigate this? Slightly drag your rear brake. Seriously, next time you're riding, take about 15 minutes and pop into an empty parking lot. Try to do some figure eights while only using the light throttle input and moving the bars. Then try it by dragging your rear brake slightly. You'll be amazed at how stable your bike suddenly becomes when you're giving it just a little bit of a drag in the rear. Now the reasons behind why this happens are a little wonky and scientific, but let's just chalk it up to gyroscopic forces and our Lord Rossi watching over your sweet little souls. Now. Shabby Pubes wants you to take care of yourself, which is why today's episode is supported by the good folks over at Manscaped. You might be wondering, Amy, why did you partner with these folks? I mean, come on guys, these ads sell themselves. I am the shabbiest of pubes and Manscaped's products finally allowed me to be a little less shabby. With their 6,000 RPM trimmer named the Lawnmower 2.0, seriously, and the No Nick Ceramic Blades, you're gonna be saying, I love my nuts, slap my nuts, you love my nuts. Now I know 6,000 RPM doesn't sound like a lot, but guys, you have to look at the torque curve on this bad boy. You fire it up, 
instant power. Manscaped's trimmer is not like an R6 where you have to wait for the power band to kick in. It's right there when you need it. For a limited time, fans of the Yam get 20% off and free shipping by using the code YAM20 at checkout and clicking the link below. And if you get the Perfect Package 2.0, you're going to get a free travel bag too. Manscaped will have you saying, I love my nuts. Slap my nuts. You love my nuts. Manscaped has hooked it up for you guys with 20% off, so don't sleep on this one and make sure your clammy pubes are torqued to spec. Okay, my dudes, back into it we go. Moving on to our next habit, and it's an easy one. Habit number four, keeping to the left or right of your lane. If you've ever seen a motorcyclist riding in front of you, you'll notice that they are much smaller than a car, and so they tend to keep to either the left or the right-hand side of a given lane. Now, why is that? Do they want to just be more ready to pop over to the other lane? Not quite. Since the vast majority of travel on our public roads occurs in cars, the roads are naturally more worn in on either side of the lane. And since most riders are not in the business of catching a bunch of gunk oil or dirt onto their tires and subsequently making them have less traction, we try to stick to either the left or right hand side of a given lane. This is also extremely useful for when you're sitting in traffic. When you're on a bike, you can see much more of the environment. You'll notice that in most intersections, in the middle of the lanes, are those streaks of oil drips, coolant leaks, and other random gunk that accumulates. If you're on two wheels, it's best to keep to either side because there's probably all kinds of gunk you don't want to ride over in the middle of a lane. Moving right along to the next habit you should develop, habit number five, a smooth and well-applied throttle. This is my personal favorite. It changed my riding when I watched a twist of the wrist and realized that throttle control is everything. Matter of fact, if you haven't seen a twist of the wrist yet, do yourself a favor and watch that. Hands down the greatest video about riding a motorcycle proficiently. The key to becoming a better rider is learning that it all comes back to your throttle input. How smooth you are, how much you open it, it affects everything on your bike. It even affects your bike's handling, if you can believe it. Seriously, if you're chopping the throttle when you're riding, you'll notice dramatic effects on your bike's suspension and what the tires are doing. The key here is to treat the throttle with a light grip, similar to how you'd hold a screwdriver. Lightly crack it open, keep it open as you make your turn, and then open it up as you stand up the bike. Definitely do some more research on this and learn more about throttle application because it's a science in and of itself. Seriously, there's entire videos dedicated to just throttle control, but it's a habit you should definitely be working on. Moving on to another habit that's going to be easy for you to develop as you embark on your journey of two wheels. Habit number six, keeping an eye on your six. You know, I actually did not plan for that play on words with the sixth coinciding with the sixth habit, but I guess I've just become so unconsciously competent at writing these scripts that it just kind of flows out of me now. Keeping an eye on your six means that you should be aware of what's going on behind you. Obviously, since that's not the direction you're moving in, you shouldn't be obsessed with what's going on back there, but it pays huge dividends to pop a quick glance into your side mirrors and get a feel for who's behind you and what they're doing. Motorcyclists have an uncanny ability to be aware of what each car is doing around them. You will notice that the red Camry that was behind you, well, it's now to the side of you and he's kind of drifting in his lane. But meanwhile, the mom in her soccer minivan is closed in behind you so maybe you should switch lanes and stay in a safer spot. These are what I call mini mental calculations that motorcyclists do as we ride defensively and as if we are invisible. So keeping an eye on what's going on behind you is a habit you're definitely going to want to develop. And last but not least, here's the last habit on our list we think you should develop. Habit number seven, learning to not waddle. This is a personal pet peeve of mine, but I cannot stand it when I see riders waddling along at slow speeds. Guys, you look like a baby who just laid waste to his diapers. Waddling is not cool. Pick up your feet. Everyone knows the patrician way to ride a bike is to at most put one single foot down when you come to a stop. Otherwise, the balls of your feet should always be on those pegs. And if you paid attention to the previous item on this list, you know that keeping your right foot dragging the rear brake is just going to keep you much more stable anyways. So please, don't waddle. Leave that for ducks and for babies. You're not a duck or a baby, are you? Well, maybe you're a baby duck. You never know who's watching this video. And that's going to wrap up today's video, my sweet two-wheel loving children. What do you think? Are these habits going to help your riding? Do you think I missed any? Let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing from you, and I do my best to read everything I get, even though it truly can be a metric crap load of comments from time to time because, well, I'm just so popular. I'm kidding. Shout out again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Seriously, guys, you're going to love my nuts. Get yourself trimmed up with these bad boys. And don't forget to check out our motorcycle giveaway. I'm fixing up a Honda Hornet 919, aka the CB900, and giving it away. Click the link below to learn more about that, and I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Fact. Approximately 40,000 Americans are injured by toilets every year. Yami hasn't found himself in that statistic yet, but I haven't ruled it out as a possibility. Goodbye.